nice technique exercise. Look at this. We're playing triads. We're playing a one, two, five, one chord progression. There's a lot of fun musical stuff right in this little exercise. And hey, it's always great to have a little fun technique exercise. So today we're going to break this down. This is an exercise that follows a one, two, five, one chord progression. Nice and diatonic, very helpful for song learning, jazz, Bach, everything. It's great. Um, and more importantly, it focuses on pairing triads and going in a five fret span shape and a four fret span shape as we move around the fretboard. So I'm going to dig in a little bit more to that. But uh, if you want to get a tab or a notation for this particular exercise, please head over to my Patreon page or my Truefire channel. You'll find stuff there. And hey, please subscribe to this. You'll get more fun videos that have all kinds of cool bass playing knowledge provided by yours truly. Um, so as we do this, let's break it down. Let's get into this little lesson here. So as I mentioned before, the goal here is to kind of put together triad shapes. Now our chord progression is going to be in the key of G and we're going to go from G major to our two chord, which is going to be A minor to our five chord, which is D major. And then we're going to return to G. So if you were just kind of thinking about it as just the root notes, G, A, D, back to G. One, two, five, one, a nice kind of like four chord progression. Um, as we do this, we are going to figure out that our one chord is major. So we might play a major triad. And then our two chord is minor. We're gonna play an A minor triad. Then we're gonna play a major chord on the D, our five chord. And then we're gonna return to G. Now you can see that I'm using different triad shapes for this exercise. And I'm actually doing this cool thing where I'm choosing to play some shapes as five fret span, meaning we're going between our uh, third fret and our seventh or a span of five frets. And then some shapes we're using our four fret span. So I like to kind of start with this triad on the G major and find my root three, five. And then I'm going to choose to throw the octave on top. Here's another G. And guess what? I can play another 1, 3, 5 right there. But this time I'm using my 4 fret span shape. So I can go 5 fret span shape for the first triad. And then 4 fret span shape for the second triad. It's pretty cool. So we're kind of playing you know, G major triad and then stacking another G major triad on top, but we're working in two different fingering patterns for these triads. So it's pretty cool. Then we can kind of start working our way backwards. So really I'm just playing my root third fifth, root third fifth, and then I'm kind of playing the third and the root back down. So almost like we're descending that G major triad shape. And that's how we play over that G chord. Now we're going to go and shift to our two chord, the A minor. This time we're going to take that same concept where we're going to stack triads. This time they're going to be minor triads because we're playing it over an A minor chord. And we're going to actually flip our, our order. So before we kind of used our five fret span triad shape and then a four fret span triad shape. This time, strike that, reverse it. We're going to go our four fret span shape. So you play the, major, the minor triad like this. Then you're probably familiar with that shape. So we're going to go our four fret span shape, and then we're going to stack on top of it our five fret span shape. So we can kind of build our first A minor triad like so, and then our second A minor triad, we're going to start on this higher A, and we're going to play it like that. Um, for this, I really like kind of working my, my ring finger in. So we go index, pinky, ring, and then ring, index, pinky. And so this minor triad shape is a really great one to have under your fingers. If you're not familiar with it, make sure you uh, work it out. But again, same concept here where we're stacking 
two minor triads on top of each other. And then I kind of just like fall back on myself where I'm playing that triad up, triad up, and then just working it back to that A. So, so far for the exercise, we're going to play our G chord, then our A minor chord. Now we need to play over our D chord. We're going to do it like that. So we're going to play our D major triad. We're going to use our four fret span shape and we're just going to go root, third, fifth, octave. And now we're going to fall back on ourselves because uh, in this position, we don't really have the space to do a full two octave unless we go to a new part of the neck. But for this exercise, we're just going to kind of stay down here. So we're just going to play root, third, fifth, octave, fifth, third, root. And then we're going to actually grab that lower fifth, which is down here. So if we think that D is our root note, the fifth above is the A, we're just finding that lower. And that's actually going to be a great segue to take us back to our G. So when we play over that D chord, it's going to be like that. Root, third, fifth, octave, fifth, third, root, lower fifth. And then we can fall right down to our G. And as I play over that chord, I'm going to again bring back my uh, five fret span G major shape. Go root, third, fifth. And then I'm just going to throw a little little F-sharp G to finish it out. So um, in this case, I'm actually playing a G major 7 chord, root, 3rd, 5th, 7th, landing on the octave. Sounds great. All nice. I'll play it one time through, all together. There it is. Great little technique exercise. Works in a bunch of different triad shapes. Nice and diatonic. Great thing to throw into your practice routine. And it's also great to do this with a metronome. You know, I highly recommend working on timing, working on consistency. Start slowly so that you can kind of get these triad shapes down or even just work at one on a work at work on one at a time and uh, you know just play your G triads and then play your A minor triads so on and so forth so if you want to get tab notation please head over to my patreon page you'll be able to find it there and happy practicing everybody keep it groovy